What so kinds of things kept you up at night in this job? Um, <laughs> well, I did actually have a couple of, I say almost all-nighters because I got, you know, maybe an hour's sleep and a shower. Okay, so it doesn't quite count for an all-nighter. Um, one was over the federal government shutdown. Uh, I mean, it was in my first year in the job. Uh, I couldn't believe it. You know, if you're in the forever business and they're actually shutting off your budget, and for what purpose? To spend millions of dollars more than it would have cost if they hadn't done that? I just, it was uh, a grave disappointment in how our democracy has not worked as well as it should. And why was I up all night? I was trying to negotiate uh, initially with Governor Herbert in Idaho, and I mean, excuse me, in, I'm in Idaho, in Utah, because um, that season, the fall season, is really critical for the mighty five national parks in Utah. Uh, people plan their vacations for years, some coming from all over the world to come and visit Arches or Zion or, you know, Canyonlands or, or uh, Bryce. Um, and they were uh, closed down and uh, he could see the economic impact on his state. And uh, we also had uh, some of his local sheriffs that were planning, we'd heard, to take over the national parks by force. And uh, I didn't think that was a very good idea, so I called the governor on that. And we worked hard into the wee hours of the morning to uh, negotiate a deal, and the National Park Service uh, obviously was involved, the uh, Treasury Department was involved, the Department of Justice was involved to allow the states to pick up the tab to reopen the national parks in full. We ended up doing that in seven states over the course of the shutdown, so that was one. Another was over the Bunkerville standoff. Um, you know, you have... Uh, a cattle rancher that has not paid fees to lease it, to lease land from the BLM for over 20 years. It would have been a problem when Bill was in the Department of the Interior, and I'm sure you're familiar with Clive and Bundy. Yeah. So this is not a rancher that any other ranchers in the country want to be associated with. And we'd had multiple court orders. You may have issued some of, or asked for the first we ones. Tried. You tried. We tried. To remove the cattle, impound the cattle from the lands, and uh, he had not complied and so finally the BLM said we need to round up these cattle. Uh, drought uh, stricken area around Lake Mead, uh, the uh, Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, part of the National Park Service had cattle running on them. They were not being well taken care of, they were not being well controlled. So we went to round up the cattle and you all know what happened. Um, and uh, Neil Cornsey who was I think it was his first day on the job as a director of the BLM. He'd just been confirmed by the Senate. And I uh, and others were up basically all night trying to figure out what to do and we made the decision to pull people out of harm's way, which was, you can imagine, with the long planning effort that went into this action, having rounded up a lot of the cattle, uh, to have them open the gates, let the cattle out and, and back away, was extraordinarily difficult uh, for the people to do, but I am certain that human blood would have been spilled, and that just was not a risk that we wanted to take. So probably the worst day, but certainly an all-nighter. Um, and Malheur, you know, uh, revisited. I, I didn't, well, I did lose some sleep over the acquittal, I think that that's very unfortunate, but it also suggests that we don't have very strong laws uh, criminal trespass is a misdemeanor. I think that's why the Justice Department chose not to pursue that. So I lose sleep over um, people. When people are put at risk, when my employees are put at risk,